Hello and welcome, my name is Dr. K. In today's video, we will take a look at four gate deviations specific to the knee joint complex. These gate deviations are compensations for impairments at the ipsilateral ankle joint, ipsilateral hip joint, or a contralateral lower extremity. Let's take a look. The first gate deviation that we will observe is knee kept in flexion throughout the stand space of the gait cycle, despite having normal range of motion on examination. The likely impairments are at the ankle or hip, including a pascal cranial deformity, plantar flexor weakness, and hip flexion contracture. Exaggerated ankle dorsiflexion or hip flexion during stance forces the knee in a flexed position. The contralateral healthy swing limb shows exaggerated hip and knee flexion to clear the toes owing to the functionally shorter stance limb. The next gait deviation that we will observe is knee hyperextension from the initial contact to pre-swing. The likely impairment here is ankle plantar flexion contracture, has equinus deformity, or spasticity of ankle plantar flexors. Here, the knee must hyperextend to compensate for the lack of forward displacement of the tibia during mid stance. The next gait deviation that we will observe is antalgic gait. Here the likely impairment is painful stance lower extremity. It's characterized by a shorter step length and stance time on the side of the painful lower extremity. It may be accompanied by ipsilateral trunk lean with hip pain or contralateral trunk lean with knee and foot pain. The last gait deviation that we will observe is excessive knee flexion during swing. The likely impairment here is lack of ankle dorsiflexion of the swing limb or a shorter stance limb. It's used as a strategy to increase toe clearance of the swing limb. It's typically accompanied by increased hip flexion 